Hey guys, welcome back to another video. What you just saw was my fan surf. There is currently a big meta shift at the moment in terms of the swordsman class. As you guys know, I used to main Blossom Blader, and I still miss it. But unfortunately, it can be a struggle when it comes to bossing content. So in this video, I will discuss people in similar situations such as me that used to main Blossom Blader, and I will go into detail and discuss the possibility of using the fencer and I will go over the setup skills equipment and gameplay but before I do remember to like comment and subscribe for the fencer build it's pretty simple um, you want to start off with the swordsman and within the swordsman you have thrust gung-ho bear pain barrier and liberate for thrust we're only using this for mobility so make sure you get the art thrust charge, which gives it two overcharge. And what it does is lets you thrust across. Followed by Gung Ho, Bear, Pain Barrier, and Liberate. Now within all this, you also want to get Provoke. And Provoke, what it does is allows you to generate threat, especially if you're tanking in Glacial Raids. The other thing to consider is when you when you have Liberate on, if you're tanking, you want to uh, decrease the damage you're taking, so that would be Fortitude. But if you're really doing DPS, you want to have this on. So for Matador, it's pretty simple. You want to get Capote set to 5, uh, Muleta at 10, Ole at 15, Puzzle at 10, Backslide is only at 1. And finally, Corita Finale at 5. And for the attributes themselves, you want to get Raging Bow Art, uh, Remove Knockdown from Peso, Encore from Corita Finale, Backslide, Perfect Timing, uh, Resets if you can successfully evade an enemy attack, Muleta Showtime, let's see what else, Counter Attack from Muleta as well. And then, let's see here, what am I missing? Definitely get all the the arts themselves that allows you to enhance them, such as, um, yeah, enhancement. And then lastly, the most important part of this build is the fencer itself. You want to get Sep to 15, just one into toucher, uh, attack compose, keep it at 15, preparation is only one anyway, uh, balistra, I set to 3. EP Guard, I set to 5. Fletcher is your main attack as well. I keep it at 100. And for... Let's see, what is it? Esquitoucher, you want to get the clean dodge. You, If you completely evade an enemy attack. So this is more of an iframe, which is useful if you're doing Taharsha or... Uh, just basically invincibility. And then, let's see here, what else? That's pretty much it. And you just want to get... Get the art, which is Fencer. Fencer is parrying dagger, and basically it activates block when you equip a dagger, and the damage is decreased. Rate due to block is half, and you, once if you do successfully block, you have an increased damage for 30 seconds, for 30 percent for three seconds, which is pretty good. And then you want to turn this attribute on as well. Convert 25 percent of the dagger's attack into physical. Barbarian. Because my build is focused on channeling, I have maxed out Pounce. And this is pretty much simple. Uh, get Pounce at max, get the Trance art attribute, get Frenzy at 10, Sism at 10. This is your your only AoE skill that helps with the knockback and stunning them. Uh, cleave, 100, remove knockdown, and then we'll cry 100. And that's pretty much it for this. So, my typical rotation. Let's get into that. Typically, I start out with the usual buffs, which is Gung Ho, Bear, and Epigard. And that's followed by Liberate and Pain Barrier. And then I prep. I switch on over to my Mooring. Rapier, which allows me to keep Ole at 100% uptime. And what it does is increases by 10 seconds. And right now, 
it is 30 duration is 20 seconds and the next time you can cast it is 30 seconds which is great because I can keep it at a hundred percent uptime increasing my crit rate by 88 percent which puts my crit at 9.5 thousand which is more than enough especially when I'm using a Marnox card itself which is only at four stars let's bring it back up so after Ole, I like to turn on my uh, Frenzy, followed by Fletche to build up stacks. Then followed by Warcry and Cleave. So I started with Fletcher. Then I moved on to Passo Double, increasing my crit rate. Now once I increase my crit rate, since I'm channeling, I always connect with Pouncing. And that's pretty much all it is for your combo. And if you're actually doing something that involves Telharsha and you're trying to get to the spiders, definitely try to use skills like uh, Balistra, which is similar to the Blossom Blader's Flash. And if you are on cooldown, you could dodge back and then follow by thrust. This will really help you in terms of mobility. On cooldown, you could use... Pretty much you could use any of the other skills on cooldown. Um, so going back to that one iframe skill... Exquivit Toucher. It's like a three or four second iframe. Uh, when do you use Muleta? And I like to use Muleta whenever the enemy is auto attacking or physical attack. And what it does is once it procs, it increases your. Wait, let's see where it says. Reduces the cooldown of your Matador skills by one second per attribute level. So what are some Matador skills that we're using? That is Ole. When it's on cooldown, you want to reset that. Same thing with Corita. Paso Doble. Muleta. It's unaffected by it, but Capote as well. And Capote is really good for threatening the nearby enemies. And what it does is reduces their crit resistance, allowing you to do more damage to them. And that's pretty much it in terms of skill rotation. So you might be wondering what type of equipments I would be using. And right now, the definitive endgame equipment is the Glacia Legenda Leather Armor Set. And this is the typical what you would wear if you're not healing, which relies on cloth. Um, and what you're seeing here specifically is the random eye core, which is set to block crit rate, con, and strength. And that is actually what you need for a fencer. Now, some might argue you don't really need crit rate because of 100% uptime of Ole, and you could substitute that with dex. And you would have something like strength, con, dex, and block. Um, but you need to realize some monsters or some bosses will have high crit resistance. So it might help in some cases to actually have some, some um, extra crit rate so I like to keep it at block, crit rate, con, and strength. There is an alternative and that is removing block itself completely and sticking with the typical DPS setup, which is strength, con, dex, and crit rate. It's entirely up to you. It depends on your own playstyle and the enemy itself. Uh, what you're seeing here is the channeling set, which is Infinity Blessing. It's part of Dahlia's Blessing Goddess set. And what it does is for every piece that you're wearing, increasing it the channeling direct attack skill by 100 percent and during that channeling phase your damage taken is decreased by five percent per part and the cooldown is also decreased by five percent so wearing all four pieces actually gives you a 400 percent increased damage a 20 percent decreased damage taken and a 20 percent cooldown on the channeling skill itself and you might be wondering what exactly is a channeling skill 
Well, a channeling skill is what you're seeing with Pounce or Cyclone. I don't have Cyclone on this build, but this is the channeling build itself for using Pouncing. The other equipment, uh, let's see here, the Glacial Agenda Rapier. Uh, what I'm using is the Vivora Leventador. The other to consider is the Sephanos Does Not Dagger. Now, keep in mind this only takes uh, fixed I cores, and I'm using the Glacia Dagger I core. I could use the Vivora Coordination Dagger, but unfortunately the market is a bit crazy at the moment. And then the big set, legend set enchantment I'm using is Valenta. There is a lot of debate whether Salk or Valenta is better. I had Salk on my Blossom Blader. I decided to set up with Balenta and only because sustainability. It's great to have burst damage using Sulk, but if you're not healing and you can't sustain yourself throughout a fight, you know, what's the point? So I, I figured I'd try it out. And so far, I it saved me a couple of times in prickly situations. So that is for that. And then appearance same enchantments you want to for your enchantments you want to set for uh, physical critical attack definitely physical attack itself followed by caroline set if you don't have this it's okay to use the draconis like go for the morimponia necklace your typical swordsman seal arc uh strength if you are rich go for divine retribution and then cards are usually based on what you what the, what monsters you're fighting, but typically for DPS you want to settle for the Demon Lord Marduk's card, Rashua card if you got it. But I'm using Nether Bowman because I don't have Rashua. Zaro for defense, physical, and Stone Whale as well. Uh, let's see here. Assisters. I like to use two beasts. And why we why we're we using two beasts? Well, beast type combination passive gives about 45. What gives you strength? And because I am a fencer, I'm using the Grim Ribbear. But you need to realize that if you're pouncing, that's a slash type attack, right? So I'm gonna stop this and use Noctis. And so what you're seeing here is Ski Eclip, Mizrus, Noctis, and Grim Reaper. And that is my current assistor setup. And what the bonus you'll, you'll be getting is additional damage, accuracy, strength, decrease field zone damage and increase grade zone damage let's see what else am i missing oh that's right i am using the morimponia rapier and that is just so i could keep 100 percent uptime on ole and that's pretty much it